早前主日信息曾经提及，比特币 Bitcoin 将会系敌基督六六六经济系统嘅前身。因此，有朝一日当传统经济崩溃时，比特币嘅价值亦会同时间水涨船高，达到天价。其实，现时比特币已经按照日华牧师早前嘅预测，渐渐合法化。例如，二零一五年九月，美国商品期货交易委员会 （CFTC） 正式確認比特币为原油或小麦一般嘅实质商品。又例如，二零一五年十月，欧盟最高法院裁定比特币为货币嘅一种。比特币嘅价格经过一段时间嘅沉寂后，近月突然展开自二零一三年起最大嘅升浪，由八月下旬嘅二百美元到二零一五年十一月曾升至五百美元，升幅达一百五十个 percent。但其需求增加而导致价格突然上升嘅其中一个原因，反而系由于一个庞氏骗局使用 Bitcoin 而起，系曾因欺诈入狱嘅俄罗斯前议员 Sergey Mavrodi 以比特币设计一个金字塔层压式推销嘅庞氏骗局。简单而言，庞氏骗局 （Ponzi Scheme） 系指骗徒设计一个金字塔式推销平台，以超高息红利回报，引诱人投资。但系当中嘅钱唔同于传统为著投资有潜质嘅项目，如巴菲特嘅基金，然后期待生意增长发展而得到利润及赚取回报。庞氏骗局当中所收取嘅金钱根本冇投资到任何项目，所谓嘅利润回报只系用下线嘅新钱支付上线嘅佣金或红利。同时间，骗徒亦从中取利，因此骗局发展得越大，当中所带嚟嘅亏损亦越大。整个骗局就系以新嘅金钱支付旧嘅金钱。直至唔能够再吸引下线继续投资时，整个骗局就会爆煲，所有参加者亦会蒙受巨额损失，最终一无所有。亦因此，骗徒越系能够吸引更多人参加，上次能够说服更多下线加入，新钱源源不绝时，就会延迟爆煲嘅时间。但当爆煲时，受害人就会越多。近年嘅经典例子就系、是、曾任美国纳斯达克交易所主席嘅马多夫。佢所掌握嘅基金，不论任何时候，亦自称拥有稳定嘅回报，但系实际上却不曾进行过任何投资。二十年之久，亦系以新钱支付旧投资者作为回报。直至二零零八年金融海啸，呢、这个骗局最终爆煲，马多夫被判入狱一百五十年嘅同时，投资者嘅损失亦高达六百五十亿美元，亦超过五千亿港元。同样地 ，Sir Jim Mafrodi 以比特币设计出 MMM 投资平台。參加者透過購買比特幣並存放喺佢哋嘅户口，即可獲得每月三十個 percent 利息。明顯地，呢個係一個騙局。原因，佢哋並冇做任何能夠帶嚟每月三十個 percent 利息嘅生意。A Russian fraudster who served jail time after creating a huge financial pyramid back in the 1990s is apparently back in business. His return came to light when numerous financial institutions were alerted by a spike in the price of that cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. It reached its highest value, in fact, in more than a year. Why was the question? Well, Bitcoin has since dropped in value, but analysts have been looking、uh, for what caused this sudden surge. One reason could be the growing popularity of the social financial network. MMM. Now you may recall that name, but、well, it's recently gained popularity in China. This is the alleged mastermind behind it. His name is Sergei Mavrodi. He's infamous here in Russia for his then MMM Ponzi scheme back in the 90s, which simply put pays returns to investors from new capital rather than from profit made. He served jail time for fraud over that. After being released, he started again launching similar schemes. He managed to launch the same pyramid in South Africa, which has become very popular there. He also started using the internet for his frauds too. So far, he's yet to match though his previous achievements. Back to the 90s, that Ponzi scheme was created in 1992. It quickly gained popularity then. In fact, it promised up to a 1,000% return on investment. Pretty good, but rare, isn't it? The、uh, pyramid collapsed two years later, with up to 15 million Russians losing their savings. The scheme was promoted through a series of TV adverts back then, depicting an ordinary Russian man who gradually became ever richer with MMM's help. Oh, you are my you. Куплю уже не сапоги. Это просто Леня. А о, Эмма. 
Jeffrey Tucker from the Foundation for Economic Education told us that scammers appear whenever there's new technology in Bitcoin, no exception. Basically, if people want your Bitcoins and they promise a return that's wildly above market average, it's a scam. I mean, you just know it. That, that's what they, all these companies do the same thing. They want you to deposit your Bitcoins with them and they promise you above average uh, market rate of return um, as a matter of contract. And what they will do is take your Bitcoin and you'll never see it again. You know, something like Bitcoin is a new player in the financial markets and, and people get easily uh, hornswoggled into these, into these deals hoping to get rich uh, very, very quickly. Um, and it's just too good to be true. I mean, uh, the, the only way to, uh, to invest in Bitcoin is to, uh, to buy it and hold it and keep it in your own possession and to never give it away uh, to somebody else who's promising uh, returns that are implausible and ridiculous. You can't do that. It, does, it doesn't work. Every new technology has scammers out there. Railroads, electricity, you know, uh, internal combustion. They, they all had scams associated with them, and it's no different with uh, uh, Bitcoin and blockchain technologies. Here, the most scary thing about this time is that the most famous scam in Belarus was the one that was perpetrated on over 100 people. The scam was the one that was perpetrated on over 100 people. The scam was the one that was perpetrated on over 100 people. The scam was the one that was perpetrated on over 100 people. The scam was the one that was perpetrated on over 100 people. The scam was the one that was perpetrated on over Fraudy 因此按下我想要获得帮助，B关作为新会员，佢唔能够要求帮助，佢要先提供帮助。因此佢选择提供帮助一万元。电脑撮合咗A关与B关，B关支付咗一万元俾A关。一个月后唔系A关将一万元连
，警告参加者可能会血本无归。呢、这个可能系整个网页当中最诚实嘅一句话。咁样咁显浅嘅骗局，点解又会有人上当？点解又会有人参加呢？除咗利用人性嘅贪婪之外 ，M M M 奖励会员写感谢信，多谢别人付款帮助，当中甚至系大额嘅帮助。正所谓买得大，赔得大。眼见其他人一个月就能轻易赚取三十个 percent 嘅利润，边个唔会动心？另外，当然唔少得以传销方式，以红利吸引会员介绍下线参加。当自己成为上线嘅时候，就会赚得更多。所以，当 s i r g e m a f o r d y 于俄罗斯时，设局欺骗自己嘅国民，但坐监后到外国就创设一个平台，欺骗全世界嘅人。因此，任何人参与呢个平台，就成为咗其中一个大骗子。虽然有人自以为聪明，只系用多余嘅钱去参与，就如音乐以游戏一般，喺骗局开始之时就立即参与，赶搭顺风车，如此自己就必然可以于音乐停止之前，早早揾到坐低嘅位置，不单唔会蒙受损失，仲可以赚钱，不失为一条好财路。可是对于基督徒而言，呢、这个正正系为苦作伥、助纣为虐嘅帮凶行为。就因为参与其中，为呢个骗局提供金钱，甚至下线，从而令呢个骗局能够欺骗更多人，最终亦令更多人遭害，甚至家散人亡。依家重看比特币，由于比特币系新产品，系历史上从未出现过嘅电子货币，唔可以如纸币般放喺银包、保险箱，甚至银行户口当中。当被骗走后，较实体纸币更难追查，因此比特币于保管及应用上都要有智慧。尤其系当佢嘅价值可能几何级数上升时，期间亦会有更多骗徒以层出不穷嘅方式，尝试骗取弟兄姊妹手上嘅比特币。所以最佳嘅方法仍然系将比特币存于自己嘅电子钱包当中，并且努力學習 Bitcoin 及 Blockchain 嘅新资讯。原因终有一日 ，Bitcoin 会完全取代实质货币，做一啲學识，对自己更系百利而无一害。有关比特币于保管及应用上嘅智慧，可以重复重温二零一四年二月份嘅二零一二荣耀盼望信息。